Coming up on Ag Week TV, some farm groups express concerns about possible changes in tax and environmental policies in the Biden administration. There are some surprises in the February WASDE report we'll have analysis. There could be good news for farmers needing foreign workers under the H-2A visa program. And one small town turns its former school into a center for rural innovation. Welcome to Agui TV. I'm Michelle Rook. Farm groups are expressing some concern about potential changes for agriculture under the Biden administration, from taxes to environmental regulations. Farmers fear a change in tax policy, which they say was favorable under the previous president. They point to possible revisions in the estate tax provisions and the elimination of the stepped-up basis, which could make it nearly impossible to pass down the farm to the next generation. I bought my farm a long, long time ago when I don't have much of a basis in it and today's land has gotten very high, so it could really cost them a lot of money just to even inherit the farm. Wurz says reinstituting various environmental regulations rolled back under the Trump administration could also potentially burden agriculture, and they're keeping a close eye on the waters of the U.S. rule. North Dakota Senators Kevin Kramer and John Hovind aren't taking any chances and issued a resolution to uphold the Navigable Waters Protection Rule, which replaces WOTUS. Former House Ag Committee Chair Colin Peterson is also warning farmers about the potential environmental regulations that could result from the Biden administration's climate change policy. Peterson spoke at the annual American Sugar Beet Growers Association virtual meeting. He says he's not sure how the sugar industry will be able to position itself to help with climate change, but they need to be proactive to ensure their future. He says the sugar industry is currently in a good spot with the current Farm Bill policy. I'm glad we've got the loan increases locked in for sugar. We got a program that's good. And I think the attitude is just keep what we got and don't let them undermine it. Peterson says another issue to look out for is a push for payment limits on farm program payments for crops. Farm groups are mixed on the proposed merger of the South Dakota Departments of Agriculture and Environment and Natural Resources. Governor Nome submitted an executive order outlining the merger prior to the start of the 2021 session. So far, the state's pork and soybean farmers are neutral. Farmers Union is in opposition, but the State Farm Bureau, Cattlemen's and Dairy Producers Association support the proposal. It'll save a lot of money, but it streamlines things too, so we uh, can go to just one office when you have to review your permit or you have to get paperwork done. Hunter Roberts would become secretary of the new Department of Ag and Natural Resources, but won't work alone. The lieutenant governor, in this case a rancher, will be the spokesperson for production ag, and, and so who, who better to be, have the ear of the governor than the lieutenant governor? Post thinks legislators will approve the merger. If they don't pass a resolution disapproving it within 90 days, it automatically goes into effect. USDA provided a bearish surprise for corn in the February WASDE report. USDA only lowered ending stocks 50 million bushels by increasing exports the same amount, but that was nearly 140 million bushels above estimates. U.S. soybean ending stocks were cut 20 million bushels by increasing exports, putting the stocks to use ratio at 2.65 percent. South American production was left unchanged. And U.S. wheat carryout was unchanged, but world stocks were lowered 9 million metric tons. Joining us with market analysis is Brian Strumman. And when we look at the report, Brian, of the corn market, that's where we saw probably the biggest disappointment in the report. You know, we really did, Michelle. I think, uh, you know, our, our uh, uh, experts were only increased 50 million bushels and, and expectations were for them to be uh, maybe 200 to 250 million. And then the world numbers too. Uh, expectations were for those stocks to be lowered, but yet they were increased. The confusing part was USDA increased China imports of corn by about 250 million bushels, but only increased U.S. exports by 50 million bushels. Okay, that doesn't 
jive for me? Yeah, there's a lot of questions with that. I think when you look at the, the demand side of the balance sheet and, and China's appetite, a few weeks ago, you know, they had a, a huge week of imports of corn here from the U.S. Uh, we are the cheapest priced corn in the world. And when you increase their uh, import demand by 250 million bushels and our exports only by 50 million, where's that excess corn going to come from? Absolutely. So we scored new contract highs on Tuesday and then the market kind of sold off. So does that kind of hold as far as our high here for the time being, you think? So technically, yes, we did see some damage in the charts. Uh, fundamentally, again, our stocks are lower and we'll have to monitor that export demand as we move, move forward. So maybe an ending stocks came in about where we thought, but at 120 million bushels, there's still some skeptics that think we need to come down more. Do you think USD will do that in subsequent reports? Or? It'll be interesting to see what happens. And I think we have to look at export demand as we move forward. Uh, there's a lot of talk now that uh, since Brazil is online and harvesting, that maybe some of that Chinese demand moves over to Brazil. Uh, we'll have to continue to watch that as we move forward. But our stock are at a seven-year uh, low so it's uh, we're we're in a tight situation as far as soybeans go so Brian do you think the high is in in soybeans that we hit in January I think we still have to see those prices uh, be supportive and be higher we are the cheapest priced soybeans in the world and uh, lower prices aren't going to curb demand so we need to again have some higher prices to slow down that demand so the U.S. wheat stocks were left unchanged in the report. The big surprise probably or the big change was the world production numbers or the ending stocks numbers, right? You're exactly right. I think when you look at the wheat numbers, stocks were basically left unchanged. Estimates were for the stocks to be slightly tighter for the world production, but they were lowered 9 million metric tons. So that was a big cut as far as world stocks go on the wheat side of the balance sheet. And wheat prices, they have to kind of keep up with corn and beans here as we get into the acreage battle now, right? We do. I mean, right now, when you look at the inputs that it takes to uh, produce wheat versus possibly soybeans, uh, there's not a lot of incentive to, incentive to plant wheat. Well, thanks for your analysis today, Brian Strumman, joining us with Progressive Ag. The U.S. Census Bureau released U.S. export totals for 2020, and it looks like China missed the mark on their phase one trade deal obligations. Total China purchases were estimated at $28.75 billion, which falls short of the $36.5 billion they committed to. Soybeans accounted for the largest share at more than $14 billion. Pork exports to China came in at $2.28 billion, with cotton at $1.8 billion and corn at $1.2 billion. That was followed by wheat, beef, and DDGs. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to a town of 58 people. They've turned their school into a rural innovation center. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009, with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. The annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo is happening soon, and it's easier than ever to attend. Join the two-day virtual event February 23rd and 24th from anywhere, snow or shine. Hear from your host, Tyne Morgan, as she moderates the U.S. Farm Report with market specialists. Weather expert Eric Snodgrass will take a look at risks for the upcoming growing season, and the shark farmer will dive into agricultural advocacy. Check out the schedule and register today at northerncornsoyexpo.com. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems, the number one Brock bin dealer in the U.S. is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Now is the perfect time to take advantage of discounts on Brock solid bins, grain dryers, and aeration systems. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com or call 1-800-747-4499. Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line 
and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories, along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Welcome back. Many farms rely on temporary foreign workers for seasonal help. The pandemic halted those plans for the 2020 season, leaving many farmers scrambling for help. But another year of interruption may have been avoided through the H-2A visa program. The Biden administration has announced that H-2A visiting employees from South Africa are considered essential workers and will be allowed into the U.S. Chad Olson uses about 65 workers from South Africa on his custom combine operation based in southwest Minnesota. He says there are a lot of unknowns right now, making it tough to plan the season, but he's feeling more optimistic. Last year, he had to put together a crew using family and friends. A month down the road, we're going to know more. And if it's looking like these guys aren't going to be available on time, then I'm going to start putting another crew together. Uh, one way or another, we're going to figure it out. One possible hitch is South Africa is currently on a lockdown, so it's not known if workers will be able to leave. A small town school in central North Dakota that closed more than a decade ago has new life as a community center. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Katie Pinky visits the Tuttle Rural Innovation Center to see what one small town has done to put their school building back to use. We don't just have a town here, we have a community. The Tuttle Rural Innovation Center now fills the halls of the Tuttle School, which closed in 2007. The space is now going to be used for community events, local foods, and also a meeting space for people to come to Tuttle. When the school closed, the building was in great shape, and, and I didn't want to see it turn into an eyesore. With the community, we've had a lot of help from the whole community and the surrounding area to, to keep it going. Tuttle, North Dakota farmer Burdell Johnson became active when the school closed in 2007 after serving on the school board. He wrote grants and encourages other farmers and ranchers to get active in their communities. This was kind of set up to be a demonstration center that what other communities could do. It's volunteers like Sid Larson that allow the Tuttle Rural Innovation Center to work. He blows the snow and the community room was named after him. If this would get going, I think it would create some more jobs right around here and uh, help and maybe draw some of our younger generation to come in here and get things going. It's volunteers like Lisa Goodman getting involved in the Tuttle Rural Innovation Center that make it a success. She's planning a summer quilt show. Just having a community that you feel like you're a part of is very important. This remote community and revitalized school building sets an example of what rural communities can be. From Tuttle, North Dakota, this is Katie Pinky for Ag Week. The center has received more than $400,000 in grants. They plan to plant a homestead berry garden and orchard this summer. You can read all about it in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Many producers have booked their seed for 2021, but should be aware of proper labeling. By law, all seeds sold has to be labeled regardless of what it's used for. North Dakota's state seed department regulatory manager says never buy seed without a label and be sure to get it at the same time you get the seed. Jason Golt says the labels prove the seed has been tested for purity and germination. That helps growers determine if it's the right variety for their operation. It's mainly a consumer protection issue, although it does protect the labeler as well. So all seeds sold, regardless of planting purposes, has to be labeled. So the consumer who's spending quite a lot of money should have some assurance of what they're purchasing. Gold says the label should contain the seed origin, the seller's contact information, and a lot number. Ahead on the show, we'll take you to a premier cattle breeding operation as our Ag Week Livestock Tour continues. And later, how one farmer's market is faring in this sub-zero cold. The best land rollers in the industry are built right here in North Dakota. And now, they carry a 10-year factory warranty. With sizes from 15 to 91 feet, 
Summers has the right fit for any operation. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about the full line of Summers field tested tough equipment. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. This week's Arctic blast was stressful for producers and livestock. How long will it last? Here's John with our Acker Weather Outlook. The Arctic air that worked its way into our region this past week is still here, gradually abating as we go through the week. We'll talk about that, about how it will stay really fairly Arctic across other parts of the country. The Arctic air is also dry, so in the northern reaches, flurries. We're not getting any more additional moisture. It continues to be a fairly dry winter north of about Iowa. From Iowa south, not so much. Snow, this a forecast period, is in a spot that doesn't usually get much snow, and I'll show you some of that as well. Frigid weather this weekend still hanging around the northern plains, but it will rather quickly retreat this week. The cold, however, will not. And in fact, sub-freezing air is going all the way down to the Gulf Coast region this week, and some of this is going to bring some heavy snow down to many parts of the south. Southeast still fairly warm to start off the week with this jet stream down south meandering. Locally in the northern plains, upper Midwest, it will stay cold, although the really cold stuff, the sub-zero stuff, is in retreat. Uh, this air mass basically just warming a bit, being modified by the latitude. The reinforcements of frigid air are stopping, but it's not going to warm that much. It'll stay below freezing in the north all week. And down south, the freezing weather will really have some lasting effects. Toward the end of the week, it'll even start getting chilly down in Florida, although the west will start to recover a little bit. Not a lot of warmth, though, anywhere. A very cold week across the central and southern United States. For the second week of the period, watch the, the cold weather continue to linger into the northern plains. The month of February, from Montana across to the northeastern states, is going to be by far the coldest relative to average of the winter, uh, and it looks like it will stay pretty cold right Right on through the month of February. Toward the end of this period, which is the end of the month, we will start to see warmer air beginning to recover in the western states. Precipitation, Arctic air is dry. So across the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, most of the Great Lakes, not much going on but flurries. There is, however, a major winter storm taking shape. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri, there will be a belt of freezing rain and sleet with that, and that'll work its way really mostly early on this week, the first part of this week out to the eastern states. There'll be some Pacific Northwest precipitation. The rest of the country looks fairly dry. The southern edge of that to snow 
snowstorm in the south will likely yield some severe thunderstorms in parts of the southeastern states. The second week still pretty dry, although it's not going to be quite as cold. Still pretty dry in the northern plains. Looks like a second system will spin up uh, along the fringes of that cold air. Not quite as bad of a storm, but a second round of snow in some parts of the south. California, the southwest dries out. Pacific Northwest stays fairly moist, but for the northern plains region, the next two weeks very nearly bone dry. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Schedule an uptime inspection for your equipment with the Case IH service professionals at your local Titan Machinery. Our Case IH certified service technicians have the training, experience, and genuine Case IH parts to ensure your equipment is ready for next season. Planting and harvesting windows are short. Have confidence in your equipment's performance with a Titan Machinery multi-point uptime inspection. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH service leader. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. The Ag Week Livestock Tour is sponsored by Transova and the Stockman's Livestock Exchange. Weber Brothers Cattle Company is stepping into the future selling Angus and Sim Angus breeding stock. On this week's Ag Week Livestock Tour, Michael Pates visited the Lake Benton, Minnesota operation to see how they're taking it into the next generation. The Weber family started farming and raising livestock here in southwest Minnesota in the 1940s. Today that business has evolved from dairy cattle to beef. They focus on selling high quality breeding bulls and heifers. We thought long term where, where we belonged was more with uh, the, the Angus seed stock and, and the Sim Angus seed stock. Cattle that we thought were more sustainable and uh, cattle that had a more of a long term future to them. Just good solid cattle that we could stand behind and feel really comfortable about when we, when we sold either breeding bulls or, or heifers. In the past few years, Weber Brothers Cattle Company has built a new barn which is partly heated. That makes it handy and comfortable to prepare bulls for sale or do embryo work. And tomorrow's generation of Webers is on the rise. I've always, always wanted to, to run cows. JT's son Jake is excited to take the business into the future despite obstacles like challenges in social media, fake meat, and environmental overregulation. Jake says that there will always be a place for beef. I know we're up against a lot of challenges, but I, I believe at the end of the day that, that people still like the taste of it and will pay a premium for it. The world's population keeps growing and, and we're, we're finding new ways to, uh, to, to feed them. And the Webbers say in addition to raising good cattle, they're taking good care of the land for future generations. At Lake Benton, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. Sub-zero temperatures aren't stopping vendors, shoppers, and even the musicians at the Rochester, Minnesota Farmers Market. The market is held in the Graham Park building. The temperature inside was only about 40 degrees this week, which still felt warmer than the air outside. 
The market's new manager, Abby Shepler, has only been on the job a couple of weeks, but she says they have a strong customer base that comes out in any weather. And she says they're taking precautions to keep vendors and customers safe. I think that the biggest issue that we face is making sure that it's safe for everyone uh, to get into the market. So making sure that everything is plowed, that there's salt down because we don't want any injuries. Shepler says one advantage to the cold is that it's better for food storage at the market. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, this cold weather is perfect for baking bread. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Ag Week. This is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Our Sub-Zero spell is a perfect time to do a little baking and what better than a comfort food like warm homemade bread. This month, Kristen Clark is sharing her favorite beginner bread recipe. She's the Iowa farmer who writes the Food and Swine blog and is a monthly Ag Week magazine columnist as well. Clark also shares a monthly video recipe with readers and viewers of Ag Week. This month, you can go to agweek.com and watch Clark make focaccia bread, which she says is perfect for beginning bread makers and can be used for anything from sandwiches to dipping. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.